Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Top Recipes. Today we're making General South Chicken. I have to be honest that this is not a dish that is widely known in China. The history behind it is quite interesting. If you want to know, there is a documentary about it. The name is called Search for General Sao. You can watch that later. Now you can stick with me and learn how to make this dish better than a local takeout. First, you will need some chicken. Obviously, <laughs> I got here some boneless chicken leg, chicken thigh, and drumstick with the skin on because after deep frying it, the skin is the best part. According to my research, Chicken leg is the way how you keep this dish authentic. After multiple tests, I have to say, if you use chicken breast, don't tell anyone that you got this recipe from me. <laughs> Just joking, but dark meat does come out juicier in texture compared to the chicken breast. Just roughly cut them into big chunks, then marinate it with 1.5 teaspoon of salt, 3 quarter teaspoon of black pepper, 2 teaspoon of soy sauce, 1 egg yolk. A lot of recipes tell you to use egg white. Egg yolk contains certain amount of fat, which will make the chicken extra crispy. I know some people don't like to use part of the egg. You can use the egg white in my Mongolian beef, chicken and broccoli recipe. There are many ways to use it, so you don't really need to throw it out. Cover it, let it sit for about 15 minutes. While waiting, we can combine 2 third cups of cornstarch and 2 third cups of all-purpose flour together. Cornstarch is another trick to make the chicken crispy. If you only use all-purpose flour, outside layer will be a bit doughy. Put all the chicken into a big container and dump the flour mixture to cover the chicken. You can also do this with a big, good quality bag. Cover the lid and give it a few good shakes. Take a look. All the chicken is nicely coated, but we are not done yet because there is excess flour on the bottom. Put the chicken pieces in a sieve and shake off the excess flour. Put this away and do the next batch of chicken because my sieve is small. This is an easy and faster trick to coat the meat with flour. You see this? Two pounds of chicken, they all coat it nicely, very even, beautiful, no excess flour at all. It used to be my trick, now it's yours. Heat the oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm using soybean oil, you can use any high smoke point oil. Put in the chicken one by one. When dealing with hot oil, I usually put the meat close to the oil possible and then drop it in. It might look dangerous that my hand is so close, but it's actually safer because it doesn't cause big splashing. Let it fry for a minute or two so the surface can form up a little bit. Then you can flip them over so they cook evenly. After 4 or 5 minutes, the outside layer should be slightly golden. By touching it with chopstick, you know it's crispy. Now it's the time to take it out. I am putting them in a sieve. Sieve is a very handy tool. Give it a little shake. It helps you to get rid of the excess oil. Put that away. If your pan is small, you might need to fry the chicken in batches. Once you finish all the chicken, let them rest for about 15 minutes. We are going to fry the chicken again, double frying it to make sure the outside crispy layer stays longer. 
Also, if you have guests coming, you can fry the second time right before serving. It's very convenient. Whenever I make general sauce chicken, I'll make more than what I can eat. After I finish the first frying, I'll save some in the freezer. Um, next time when I want to eat them again, don't need to defrost, just directly fry them and make the sauce. It will save you a lot of time. Okay, time to do the second frying. Before we do that, fish out those small particles. They will affect the taste if you leave it in the oil. Heat it to 370 degrees Fahrenheit. Put in the chicken. Keep flipping them. You only need a minute or two to get them beautifully golden brown. Take them out. I love to use the sieve so I can shake them around and listen how crispy they are. <laughs> Check this. This is what I was talking about. Make sure you use the skin on chicken. That little bit extra crunchiness is what gets me excited. Now we can make the sauce. 4.5 tablespoon of sugar, half teaspoon of cornstarch. Give that a mix so the cornstarch doesn't clump up together. 2.5 tablespoon of Chinese black vinegar, one tablespoon plus two teaspoon of soy sauce, 3.5 tablespoon of water, mix until well combined and set it aside. I also prepared some dried hot chilies, Cut some open to release the flavor. The rest of it, I will leave them whole just for presentation. The chef who invented this dish, he is from Hunan province. Hunan is one of those places in China where people love eating spicy food. So this is just a little spicy kick. Heat up your wok. Add a teaspoon of oil, some grated garlic, some grated ginger, and the dried chilies. Start with low heat, stir and saute them. We want to toast the chilies until they are slightly smoky. You should be able to smell it. You see that little black burned part? That is what you are looking for. Now you can pour in the sauce. Remember I saved some of the chicken? This sauce is only enough for half of the chicken that I made because the other half is in the freezer now. If you cook the full recipe, you need to double the sauce amount. Anyway, cook the sauce on medium heat until it becomes a thin syrup texture. Just like that. Then you can add the chicken. Toss everything until the chicken is coated nicely and you're ready to serve. Add half teaspoon of sesame seeds for some nutty taste. Top a little bit of cilantro for presentation. Look how beautiful that is. <laughs> so I just served this um, with white rice. Let's give it a try. Mmm. So good. <laughs> Even though we don't really eat this dish in China because it wasn't invented in mainland China, but as a Chinese, wow, <laughs> it is a perfect mix of all kinds of flavors. It's sweet, crispy outside, tender inside, has nice spicy kick, which is so familiar to me because I grew up with those smoked chilies. And I really like that little touch of sourness. It just balances out all the flavors. So good. <laughs> I hope you give this or my other recipes a try soon. If you haven't yet, 
click my channel name and find out how to make your favorite Chinese food. New videos coming out every Wednesday and I'll see you next time. Bye!